Ah, you got to be aware of the negatives. I think if there's probably one problem that gets students, you know, more mistakes on is when we have negatives finding the slope, because finding the slope is like relatively straightforward. It's relatively basic. If you can remember the formula, then you can find the slope, right? It's change of the Y over the change of the X. The problem with the formula of slope is that it has a subtraction or in, in the numerator as well as subtraction in the denominator. So, you know, Y or M is equal to y2 minus y1 all over a x2 minus x1. Now that's not horrible, right? Because subtraction is not like the worst in the, <laughs> it's not the worst operation in the world. The problem is though, when you have x coordinates or y coordinates that are negative, you're adding more and more negatives to the problem, right? And when we have multiple negatives, that's where students make the mistakes. So I do have a tip for you that you can use to overcome making those mistakes. And the tip is pretty simple. It just is using your parentheses, all right? So we want to find the slope. Notice how this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So let's label our coordinate points. We have an x, y coordinate here, and we have an x, y coordinate here. Um, unless there's like some problems that's easier to subtract one way or another, I always just like to make the first point, the one furthest to the left, x1, y1, and the second point, x2, y2. Again, like there might be some problems in the future that I might explain why I'm choosing one point to be, you know, the x1, y1 compared to another. But in most examples, it doesn't matter. It's not going to make your life any easier. So just, you know, do whatever works for you. Okay. Now, again, what I mentioned, use your parentheses. I cannot stress this enough, like how helpful this can be in you avoiding making mistakes. Because when you're just using so many, when there's so many negatives out there, not using parentheses can really, really mess you up. So what I like to do in this example is say, all right, my Y2, that's gonna be five. Even for positive numbers, I'm just going to use parentheses. It's just, it's something I'm going to be consistent on. The next thing I want you to do is keep your parentheses. Like now I have the benefit of having something like with different colors, like maybe you have one of those cool pens that you can like change it up. I don't know, but, or maybe using pencil, which probably your teacher prefers. Um, but, you know, just try to make sure you're keeping this subtraction symbol, right? I'm keeping the same one there. And then I'm going to subtract this from a, the other, my Y1, which is a negative three. Okay. Then I'm going to do it all over again. I'm mean, now in this case, I'm going to take a negative three, which is my X2. And then I'm going to subtract it. And again, I'm just using this negative here. I'm going to subtract it from a negative seven. Okay. Now the thing that I want you to remember is remember subtracting a negative is like positive adding, right? It's like a double negative. So you're really actually adding in this case. So this is five minus a negative three, which is just going to be a eight. And this is a um, negative three minus a negative seven. So that's adding. So it's like a negative three plus seven, which is really just going to be a four. And then eight divided by four is going to equal a, um, you can see this is a two over a one, or you can just write it as a two. And there you go. That's it. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.